They may be some of the smallest animals of all, but insects are some of the most resourceful life forms on our planet. By developing huge collectives, hundreds, thousands, even millions of individuals can work together towards a common goal, from gigantic underground structures to frightening webs and miniature cities. In today's video, we're going to explore the top 15 most incredible insect colonies in the world. Starting with number 15, Cathedral Termites. Cathedral termites are a species that are normally found across arid regions of Australia's northern territory. They get their name from their enormous mounds they construct, which almost resemble miniature cathedrals against the backdrop of the barren landscape. These colonies are complex and highly organized, and the mounds that we see above ground, which can reach heights of up to 15 feet or over 4.5 meters, are just the beginning of a vast underground structure made up of an intricate network of tunnels, chambers, and galleries. The termites use a combination of mud, plants, saliva, and feces to build these homes, and because of these materials and the way they're designed, they have a remarkable ability to maintain a constant temperature and humidity no matter what's happening outside. The towers around the mound are hollow, and this creates a circulation effect with the air inside, so the cooler air from the base blends with the warmer air above, essentially acting as a natural air conditioning system. The colonies that live within are massive, with populations numbering hundreds, thousands, millions of them. They're divided into different types, including workers, soldiers, and reproductive termites. And each member has a specific role within the colony, contributing to its overall function, with the workers responsible for foraging food, maintaining the mound structure, and caring for the young. The soldiers protecting the colony from predators with their powerful jaws and chemical defenses, and the reproductives ensuring the colonies grow through the production of new offspring. Number 14. Parawixia bistriata The Parawixia bistriata, which is more commonly known as the social orb weaver spider, is a species that's found in South and Central America. If the thought of encountering a single spider in the region is a problem, then this species takes things to a whole new level, because it's one of the very few that have complex social dynamics and they form elaborate colonies. They live in groups of hundreds or thousands of individuals, with the colonies usually being established in shrubs or trees. They create these communal nests from a combination of silk and plant material, and once they're built, these nests are distinctive in appearance, resembling a tangled mess of webs and can stretch between trees, and on average, 33 feet in diameter. At first, you may even think there's a flock of birds in the air, but as you look closer, you realize there's a large number of spiders dotted across a web, with each individual having bodies that measure around 0.8 inches or about 2 centimeters. Within the colonies, there's a well-defined social structure, and it's normally led by a dominant female known as the queen, who's responsible for reproduction and maintaining order. Other females in the colony serve as her helpers and assist in various tasks such as foraging, web maintenance, and defending the nest. Male spiders are present too, but they primarily play a role in mating and are less involved in colony activities. Now, this colony structure offers several advantages to the members. They work cooperatively to capture prey, with multiple spiders collaborating to subdue larger insects. And this social setup also provides protection from predators, as the collective presence of many spiders can deter potential threats. Number 13. Dwarf Honeybees Dwarf honeybees are among the smallest of the honeybee family, and they're native to Southeast Asia. As well as being tiny, they're known for developing colonies that are very different to other species. The nests are usually built in sheltered locations such as tree branches, rock crevices, or human-made structures like buildings and artificial hives. These nests are relatively small compared to those of other honeybee species and will house several thousand individuals at most. What's different about these colonies, though, is the unique method of nesting and management. They build exposed single comb nests that look like an umbrella structure and are made up of a single layer of hexagonal cells that hang downwards. This open air arrangement allows for better ventilation and temperature control, which is particularly vital for colonies in hot and humid climates like those in Southeast Asia. They're organized into a caste system in a similar way to other honeybee species, with a queen, worker bees, and drones. The queen is the sole reproductive female, while worker bees are responsible for foraging, defending the nest, and caring for the brood. And the drones are the males whose primary purpose is mating. While some bee species will stay in the same nest from year to year, dwarf honeybees don't, and instead migrate from one region to another. It's thought that this helps to increase the colony's fitness, as well as reducing the chance of them being infested by parasites. And it allows them to vary their diet from year to year, too. This also means that their nests never grow beyond a limited size, and they restart again each year, occasionally swarming during a season, too, to break off into new colonies if they begin to outgrow where they're living. Number 12. Leafcutter Ants 
Leafcutter ants are some of the most fascinating insects to see at work, especially if you find a trail of them stretching over quite a distance with one purpose in mind. They're primarily found in Central and South America and one of the most influential species in terms of habitat development because of their foraging and nesting habitats. Their colonies grow to enormous sizes, often consisting of millions of individuals. They're classed as eusocial insects, which means they live in highly organized societies with distinct castes, including workers, soldiers, and reproductive ants, with each caste having specific roles and responsibilities. What the species is best known for, of course, is their ability to cut and transport fresh vegetation back to their underground nests. Workers use those powerful mandibles to harvest leaves from a wide variety of plants, often stripping entire trees of their foliage. But contrary to what many think, they don't actually eat the plant material. Instead, they use it as a substrate to grow a special type of fungus within their nests, and it's this that provides them with their food. For this to be possible, leafcutter ants construct elaborate underground chambers and tunnels within their colonies to house the fungus gardens and their growing population. Their nests can be extensive, with well-organized ventilation systems and waste disposal mechanisms. Amazingly, they're also extremely attentive to the fungus to prevent the wrong type from growing. And this even means that they can detect chemical signals that are released by the fungus to understand whether a particular type of leaf is beneficial to its growth or not. Based on this response, they'll either target specific plants or collection, or avoid collecting it altogether. Number 11. Army Worm Moth Caterpillars Army worm moths, when they're in their adult stage, can develop beautiful colors, but it's when they're caterpillars that they're most interesting. They don't form traditional colonies like some social insects, but will often exhibit a type of collective behavior that's like a colony and can resemble an on-the-move group or an army. Armyworm caterpillars are notorious agricultural pests, and they're found in various parts of the world. They don't build nests or permanent structures like some other insects, but they live and move together in large clusters for mutual protection and to gather resources. When they exhaust food in one area, they collectively migrate to find fresh vegetation, and this coordinated movement can be quite dramatic, with thousands or even millions of caterpillars moving together at once. The main benefit of this behavior is defense against predators, as predatory birds, insects, and other natural enemies find it challenging to single out and attack individual caterpillars when they're together as a dense moving mass. This behavior, however, can be devastating to the agricultural industry, because when large groups of these caterpillars form, they can strip fields bare in a matter of days. With mass migrations being triggered by environmental cues such as population density and food scarcity, there are signs that unusually large events have become more commonplace as the climate changes. And it's possible they'll become one of the biggest threats to food security for humans in some territories in the coming years. As they mature, though, army worm caterpillars will eventually pupate and transform into adult moths. And once they've reached this stage, they stop exhibiting this group behavior and instead focus on mating to start the life cycle all over again. Number 10. Bald-Faced Hornets Despite their name, bald-faced hornets, which are mainly found in North America, are actually a type of wasp. But with adults growing to around three-quarters of an inch or almost two centimeters long, they're definitely on the larger end of the spectrum. Colonies are formed in the spring of each year by a single queen, and within a short period, they'll grow and have up to a thousand individuals. They build large, football-shaped nests out of a paper-like material that they make from chewed wood fibers mixed with saliva, and when completed, these can measure up to three feet or a meter in length. Within the colony, there's a well-organized social structure, too. The queen, who is the largest member of the colony, is solely responsible for reproduction and lays eggs that hatch into sterile female workers. These workers take on various responsibilities, including foraging for food, nest construction, and defending the colony, and they're easily identifiable by their distinctive black and white coloring. Bald-faced hornets are a species that are known for aggressively defending their nests and will instantly target any perceived threat, with the ability to release a potent venom when stinging. Unlike honeybees, they can sting repeatedly, too, without harming themselves, which is invaluable in protecting the colony from predators. As the summer season progresses, the colony grows and the number of individuals increases, and towards the end of the season, new queens and males are produced. These reproductives leave the nest to mate, after which the males die, and the newly mated queens find shelter over winter before starting all over again the following year. The original colony, however, will completely die off in this winter. Number 9. Weaver Ants Found in tropical and subtropical regions across Asia, Africa, and Australia, weaver ants spend the vast majority of their lives in the trees, where they search for food and build their nests. 
As the name would suggest, they don't gather material to build structures, though, and instead use what's already there, and weave plant material together in the way that they need, with the silk that's produced by their larvae. The nests they build serve multiple purposes, providing shelter, security, and a central hub for colony activities. They consist of a series of interconnected chambers, galleries, and tunnels within the leaves, with these chambers serving as nurseries for ant larvae, storage spaces for food, and resting area for colony members. The social structure of weaver ant colonies is highly organized with distinct castes, and like with most insects, the queen is the sole reproductive female. The workers, which make up the majority of the colony, take on various roles, such as gathering food, tending to the queen and her offspring, and defending the nest, and it's the soldier ants with the enlarged jaws that are responsible for colony defense. With so many threats where they live, weaver ants are highly aggressive and territorial. They actively patrol their territories, attacking intruders, including other ant species that get too close. And as well as having strong jaws and painful bites, that when inflicted by a number of individuals are usually enough to convince a would-be attacker that it ain't worth it. One of the more surprising behaviors of weaver ant colonies is the way that they hunt. They engage in group foraging and will swarm in the thousands over tree branches and foliage to capture prey such as insects and spiders. Their coordinated efforts make them efficient hunters, and their presence has a significant impact on the ecosystem by controlling pest populations. So much so that in some regions, they're actively introduced to land by farmers because they can be so effective in reducing populations of crop-damaging insects. Number 8. Tent Caterpillars Tent caterpillars are the larval forms of a group of moths that include several species commonly found in North America and other parts of the world. These caterpillars are known for their unique behavior of forming communal silk tents, which act as their shelters and hubs for various activities while they're eating enough to pupate. Tent caterpillar colonies typically begin with a single egg mass laid by a female moth. The eggs are wrapped in a protective layer of this foam-like silk, which hardens over time. In the spring, caterpillars emerge from their eggs and immediately start building a communal silk tent. These tents are often located between tree branches or in other sheltered locations. This tent serves multiple purposes within the colony, but primarily as a safe haven for the caterpillars to molt, rest, and seek shelter from predators. The caterpillars venture out of the tent to forage for food, which is usually the leaves from the host tree or nearby vegetation, and then they'll return to the tent periodically to regroup and communicate with nestmates through tactile and chemical signals. Tent caterpillar colonies are highly social, with each individual caterpillar playing a specific role. The mature caterpillars, or scouts, are responsible for finding food sources and returning to the tent to lead others to the location, while the younger caterpillars, known as feeders, stay behind and consume the leaves while also maintaining the tent structure. This division of labor allows for an efficient resource exploitation and colony defense far more so than if they remain solitary like most other species. As part of a colony, they also synchronize their feeding and their movements. When a food source is run out, the entire colony will move together in a procession to find a new site, which can be an incredible thing to witness. With caterpillars marching in rows following a silken thread laid by the lead caterpillar, they eventually set themselves up in a new location where they'll build a new silk tent and hopefully be able to stay there until they're ready to transform into adult moths. Number 7. Sweat Bees Sweat bees are a group of small to medium-sized bees that are found worldwide, but exhibit some behaviors that are unusual, like their affinity for sweat and their nests in the ground. They get their names because of the way they land on humans and other animals to collect sweat droplets, which they use as a source of hydration and minerals. This isn't their main source of food, though, and they also forage on nectar and pollen from flowers. When it comes to formations of their colonies, sweat bees adopt a social structure that falls between solitary and highly eusocial species like honeybees. They form colonies with a small number of individuals, often numbering in the dozens to a few hundred, making them less populous than some other social bees. Within the colony, there's often a clear division of labor with different castes of females responsible for various tasks. Sweat bee colonies will normally be founded by a single female known as the foundress. She emerges from hibernation in the spring, finds a suitable nesting site, and rather than starting a nest in a tree like most bees, will begin constructing a small tunnel in the ground. 
This tunnel serves as the initial nest chamber, and once it's complete, the foundress lays her eggs and provides them with pollen and nectar. As the first generation of worker bees emerges, they take over the foraging and provisioning tasks, allowing the foundress to focus on laying eggs. The social organization of sweat bee colonies may vary depending on the species. In some cases, there may be a clear division between worker bees and reproductives, while in others, multiple females may lay eggs within the same colony, making them quite unlike most other bee species. Number 6. Woolly Aphids Unlike typical aphids that are small and often green or brown, woolly aphids are covered in a white waxy substance that gives them a woolly or cottony appearance. But that's just the start of how unusual they are. They feed on plant sap by inserting their piercing, sucking mouthparts into plant tissues. And as they feed, they excrete a sugary substance called honeydew, which is a valuable food source for other insects. This honeydew production is a critical aspect of their interactions within ecosystems and together as they form colonies. They'll often appear as clusters of hundreds of individuals on plant stems or undersides of leaves. Within these colonies, you can find various life stages of aphids, from nymphs to adults. But in a twist, they aren't the only species of insect that's involved in the colony. Many species of woolly aphids have a mutualistic relationship with ants, which are attracted to their honeydew. In return for this, the ants provide protection to the aphid colonies and will continuously patrol them to guard against potential predators. Further to this first line of defense, that waxy substance that covers woolly aphids serves as both protection and camouflage. It shields them from predators like ladybugs and lace wings that help them retain moisture in arid conditions. The waxy covering can make them appear like small tufts of cotton on plant stems and leaves, making them a bit challenging to spot, especially when they're bunched together with others as predators are less likely to see them as morsels of food that are worth pursuing. Number 5. Asian Giant Hornet The Asian Giant Hornet It's one of the largest and most feared species of hornet. It's native to East and Southeast Asia, including countries like Japan, China, and Korea. They're known for their aggressive behavior and powerful stings, and have in recent years become more popularly known as murder hornets. Encountering one may be unnerving enough, but it's the colonies you should be particularly careful around because they can contain as many as thousands of individuals, each of which measures up to 2 inches or 5 centimeters long. Their colonies are typically started in the spring by a single fertilized queen. Once she finds a site, she starts constructing a small paper nest by chewing wood fibers and mixing them with her saliva. This nest serves as the foundation for the colony, which then begins to grow as workers are born. With the queen focused on laying eggs, the workers begin foraging for food and further building the nest, and are the main component of the hive's activities. Now, unlike some other social insects, the Asian giant hornets do not store food for the winter. Instead, they hunt other insects, especially honeybees, which they decimate in massive numbers. This predatory behavior has made them a significant concern for beekeepers, as they pose a serious threat to bee colonies. In the late summer or early fall, the colony's reproductive phase begins. New queens and males are produced, and they leave the nest to mate. After mating, the males die, while the newly mated queens find shelter to hibernate during the winter. The original colony, including the queen and worker hornets, eventually dies off as the weather gets colder. Number 4. Gypsy Moth Caterpillars Gypsy moth caterpillars are found across North America and Europe, and while they don't form colonies in a traditional sense, they will congregate in large groups, which have the potential to cause significant deforestation and economic damage. Gypsy moth caterpillars undergo several stages of life, with the larval stage being the most destructive. They hatch from eggs laid by female moths in masses on trees and other surfaces in late summer. These caterpillars are known for their distinctive appearance with long, bristle-like hairs covering their bodies. Now, during this larval stage, gypsy moth caterpillars feed non-stop on the leaves of a wide range of trees, including oaks, maples, and birches. When their numbers are high, they can completely defoliate entire trees, leaving them vulnerable to stress and disease, and during this time will exhibit group behavior. In the early stages of development, they'll work together to spin silken threads that allow them to disperse between branches and trees, and it's not unusual to see dozens or hundreds of caterpillars as part of the same group. As the gypsy moth caterpillars mature, though, they become more solitary and head off to find a site to pupate. Once they become moths, they will only ever meet up with one another in order to mate, and then spend the little time that they have left on their own. Number 3. Sintermes termites 
Sintermese termites, they're also known as fungus-growing termites, are a species that's mainly found in Central and South America and are responsible for some of the largest colony networks of all. They live in underground nests, which can vary in size from small family groups to massive ones. These nests are complex structures, consisting of a network of tunnels, chambers, and galleries, and the insects build using a combination of soil, feces, and saliva. As is commonly the case, the colonies have a highly organized caste system consisting of workers, soldiers, and reproductives, with the workers being responsible for most of the tasks, the soldiers with their specialized jaws and defensive abilities protecting the colony, and the reproductives of course responsible for producing new offspring and maintaining the colony's growth. In 2018, researchers revealed that what seemed like innocuous mounds across a region in Brazil were actually signs of one of the largest communities of any animal on the planet. In the northeast of the country, there are at least 200 million large mounds across an area of 88,000 square miles, which is around the same size as Great Britain, and each one of these was formed by the development of a termite colony. Even more impressive is that some are almost 4,000 years old, meaning they were being dug by the insects at the time the Roman civilization was beginning to emerge in Europe. The mounds are extremely inconvenient for farmers, as they've been baked in the sun and have been there so long that they're difficult to move. But rather than being the homes of the termites, they're simply the waste material. They represent the excavation of more than 35 billion cubic feet of dirt, which means there's a vast network of tunnels between the ground that trillions of termites are probably still using to this day. Number 2. Stingless Bees now, while you may think one of the main features of a bee is its stinger, there's actually a number of stingless bees that are found in tropical and subtropical regions worldwide. Without having this protective weapon, they have developed a different way of living, and their hives are just as unusual. They typically build their colonies in tree hollows, crevices, or in soil burrows. They can range in size from a few hundred to several thousand individuals, depending on the species, and develop an intricate architecture and organization. The colony consists of various castes, including the workers, soldiers, and reproductives, with them taking the same responsibilities as the case with other species. The nest, though, is built differently, and it's made up of a mixture of beeswax and resin. Stingless bees use their mandibles to collect and mix these materials, creating a series of intricate chambers and tunnels, with the beeswax providing structural stability, while the resin helps to waterproof and protect the nest from moisture and invaders. As they're native to warm regions, their nests are designed to maximize airflow and promote temperature regulation. They maintain a stable internal temperature, crucial for the development of their brood, with some species even constructing elaborate entrance tubes that can be several feet long to facilitate airflow and control access. In addition to their unique nests, they also have a clever way of regulating the humidity within the hive. They collect water and store it in these cerumen pots, which are specialized storage cells within the nest, and will then fan their wings over the pots, causing the water to evaporate, and then cool and humidify the nest. Number 1. Argentine Ants Argentine ants are small but highly successful invasive species that's native to South America. But with their ability to build colonies at an incredible speed, they're one of the most prevalent species across the planet. Instead of simply building colonies, they build super colonies, and these can cover entire neighborhoods, cities, or even entire regions. In fact, in several regions of California, Europe, Japan, and Australia, colonies have been discovered that cover many thousands of miles, with chemical analysis suggesting that the colonies on different continents are related and could instead be referred to as a single global super colony. There are quite a few traits unique to Argentine ants that have made this prevalence possible in comparison to others. The first is that they aren't territorial or aggressive at all, and instead of diverting resources to battling other colonies, they can focus purely on reproducing. They'll easily peacefully coexist with other species, and in some cases will cooperate. As is the case with other ant species, the colony's workforce, even though they're many magnitudes larger, is divided into castes, with workers responsible for foraging, nest maintenance, and caring for the queen and her brood. The queen, of course, is the reproductive powerhouse, continually laying eggs to replenish the colony's numbers. Argentine ants are mainly attracted to sugary substances, and their foraging trails can be seen near sources of sweet foods. They're also opportunistic predators, feeding on smaller insects and other arthropods, which they'll swarm over before dragging back to the nest. All of this, though, is creating quite an environmental concern, and it's believed to be human activity that's allowed for them to travel over oceans and take hold far beyond where they originated. 
In doing so, they've displaced native ant species and other beneficial insects, which could severely disrupt local ecosystems and even impact the pollination of native plants. Additionally, their aggressive foraging behavior can lead to problems in agricultural settings, as they may protect and tend to aphids, which can cause further damage to crops. Efforts to control the Argentine ant populations are challenging, too, due to their ability to form super colonies that span vast areas. Traditional pest control methods are often ineffective against these ants, and it's almost impossible to know how far a nest stretches, meaning the best bet is simply containment and preventing them from spreading to new places. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.